is use reading, writing, measuring and numbering in their work. They read to find out about the topic they are investigating. So it is very important for the scientists to know uh, the meaning of the vocabulary in science. If they don't know the meaning of the vocabulary, then they find difficulties in their investigation. So it's very important to know the meaning of vocabulary or the meaning of the science words. So our topic is reading to learn. If we read the matter simply uh, without any understanding or without uh, any learning, it will go in vain. It is waste of time. So what scientists do is when they read, they try to understand the concept and after collecting the uh, data or the information, they uh, use the numbers or the right to communicate or the right to communicate with the people and also try to help the people understand what they work and what they have learned. If we want to read along with the understanding, then we need to follow some of the strategies which have already used by the scientists. They use some strategies before reading, during reading and after reading. So before reading, the strategies are what we need to remember before reading. We need to collect the relevant information. Then the next point is look at the vocabulary of the words. Then be sure that you know all the pronunciation in a proper way. Next is look up for each word in the glossary. Then uh, be sure that you define each word and use the word in a sentence to show its meaning. Then read the title of the section. So these are some points which needs to be remembered before reading and which needs to be followed before reading. Then the next is during reading. What we need to do during reading? So while reading the first paragraph, we need to find the main idea. Then after moving to the next para, we need to find the details that supports the main idea of the first paragraph. Check out whether the matter is related to your topic and then check out the understanding level and then answer to the questions which are present at the end of the section which are present after the section or after a paragraph then reread the section to look for the answer to that questions so these are some points which needs to be followed while reading the content or while reading the information about something the next is after reading after reading we need to summarize what we have learned the next point is ask the questions what you have read to yourself and the next point is after questioning study the photographs and illustrations which are present in your reader or from where you are reading so these are some of the steps which needs to be followed to become a good science reader the next is writing to communicate scientists write the uh, data all the information that they have gathered to help the people uh, understand their own idea so writing to communicate is also a very important part while studying science so here there are four types of writing scientists usually write the data which they have collected in order to show or share the experience what they got uh, during investigation so uh, scientists usually use these four types of writing to describe what they are learning in informative writing you may describe about uh, conclusion, inference and observations. While in narrative writing, you may describe about uh, something by giving examples and also by telling a story. The next is in expressive writing, we may describe or we may write the letters, poems and songs. And in the last, in persuasive writing, we may write the letters about the issues of science and also we can write the points about the science. Uh, which help us to understand the nature. So these are some of the writings which are followed by the scientists while writing their data in order to communicate with other people and in order to share the information that they got while investigation. After collection of the data, scientists measure accurately uh, by using some graphs, tables and charts and also by using uh, some uh, measuring instruments like thermometer, clock, timer, spring balance, etc. They use beakers and other types of containers to measure the liquids. So next is numbering. How the scientists use numbering and the numbers in order to show the results of their investigation. So they use numbers and understand the numbers while uh, 
preceding the result or while showing the result of the investigation. The uh, using number can be divided into two ways that is interpreting data and the second way is using number sense. So in this interpreting data, scientists usually uh, choose a way to display the data and to display the result after their investigation so that it can be interpreted by others easily. So in interpreting data, they usually use tables, charts and graphs. Now look at this graph which is given in your reader. By looking at this graph, we can easily observe that this graph is displaying about the milk production per year in the different countries. By using tables, charts and graphs, we can easily interpret the data uh, which is shown by these methods or by the table, charts and graphs. The next is using number sense. The good scientists have the math skill and that math skills can be used uh, to display the result after their investigation. So many scientists use the math skill. For example, they use the pie chart. Here let's see an example. By observing this pie chart, we can able to understand and we can interpret the information easily that the lining portion represents the number of the cows, the plain portion represents the number of goats, whereas the pointed portion represents the number of camel. Therefore, it is the easy way to interpret the data and to show the results of our investigation. Our next topic is safety in science. While doing an experiment, we should follow the safety rules in a scientific lab. And that safety rules are, the first one is think ahead. So this symbol represents that we need to study the steps that should be followed while experimentation and we should know or we should able to understand the safety symbols. The next is be aware. This symbol shows or explains that if you have long hair then pull it back so that it doesn't disturb you and if you are wearing a kurti of long sleeves then roll up so that it doesn't disturb you while doing an activity or while doing an experiment. The next is oops. So this the safety symbol shows if you want to cut something or break something while doing an experiment, just inform to your teacher and ask to your teacher and then only do the cuttings or the breakings in the experiment. The next is watch your eyes. Wear goggles if needed and if anything falls into your eyes, immediately inform to your teacher. The next is yuck. Do not eat or drink while doing an activity in a scientific lab. Protect yourself from shocks. Be careful while doing an experiment and uh, be sure that the electric cords are in a safe place so that you can't trip over them. The last is keep it clean. After finishing your experiment, keep the place clean or place all the things at their own place and even wash your hands. So these are the safety measures that need to be followed while doing an experimentation in a scientific lab. So after having a glance or after understanding the lesson what is science, we came to know that the secrets of inventions and the discoveries lies in identifying a problem. How we identify a problem, how we can do or how uh, we can discover or invent the things. We'll study one example. The things fall down on the earth even before the Newton's investigations. Newton's identified the problem and he does the investigation by identifying a problem and he does investigation to find a solution to his problem. Identification of the problem and finding a solution to that problem led him to discover many things like gravity and his laws. So the secret of inventions and the discoveries lies in identifying the problem. We know that the necessity is the mother of invention. So when the people wants to travel and when the people wanted to travel uh, more faster from one place to another, so scientists discovered vehicles. Whereas when we want to travel more faster, then they discover jet planes, and many other vehicles to travel more faster from one place to another. By seeing these examples, we can say that the necessity is the mother of invention. Let us solve one general problem by using the methods which we have already discussed in planning and investigation. Let's take the problem example, the bulb is not glowing. In the first step, we have identified the problem that we observed and we got a question that the bulb is not glowing, why? So the next step is form a hypothesis. So we are writing a list of possible answers like the bulb is not glowing due to defilament or 
fuse damage or due to switch or wire. So these are the hypotheses we form to solve the identified problem. The next step is planning an experiment. How to plan an experiment? So uh, to plan an experiment, we need to collect the information or apparatus or the materials which required to conduct the experiment. So to solve this problem, we need some apparatus or the materials like wires, blade, tape, screwdriver. Now after collecting the information and after collecting the materials to solve the identified problem, the next step is conducting the experiment. Now how to conduct the experiment? So by taking the first hypothesis to check or to test the first hypothesis, we are going to observe the filament. After observing the filament, now uh, we need to conclude whether it is the problem for not glowing the bulb or not, whether our hypothesis is correct or not. So after observing the filament, we came to know that filament is good in condition. So this shows that our first hypothesis is incorrect. If you go the hypothesis incorrect, then we need to pose the new hypothesis. So we'll move to this one. We'll check out whether the fuse is damaged in order to solve our problem. So our next hypothesis is fuse damage. So after making a new hypothesis and conducting the experiment that we are going to observe the fuse of the bulb. After observing the fuse, we came to know that the fuse is damaged. Due to the fuse failure, the bulb is not glowing. So here, our next hypothesis is correct. So in this way, we can find a solution to our problems by using the scientific method. Now, I want to give a quick recapitulation of the lesson. So, uh, in the lesson, what is science? We have learned about all these topics. So, the first is science. Uh, when we heard the term science, we need to think one word that is knowledge. The word science comes from the Latin word scientia, which means knowledge. So, it is termed as a body of knowledge or it is termed as a system of acquiring knowledge through observation and experimentation. The next is need of science. Need of science varies from individual perspectives to societal perspectives. In individual perspectives, we have discussed about the scientists and the discoveries, whereas in societal perspectives, we have discussed about uh, the contributions of the science in a human's life and how the science helps to improve the lives of the people and how it's helping for economic development. Science and change. We know that scientists are always or constantly they are discovering new concepts, ideas and theories. So the body of knowledge which are produced by the science or should also undergo constant change. So science is ever changing. It doesn't remain constant or the theories doesn't remain the same. It's ever changing. The next is scientific method. Scientific method is a method or an organized way the scientists use in planning and investigation. For planning and investigation, we need to remember these five steps. The first step is observe and ask questions. The second is form a hypothesis or the possible answers for an identified question. And the third is plan an experiment. Here we need to collect the information or the materials which are required for conducting the experiment. And the fourth step is conduct the experiment, means the perform the experiments to know whether our hypothesis is correct or not. After conducting the experiment based on the results and the observation, we need to draw a conclusion and we should communicate results. While communicating results, we need to say whether our hypothesis is correct or not. If our hypothesis is incorrect, then we need to pose one new hypothesis and then we need to plan and conduct for that hypothesis also. The next is science process skills. Scientists, when they need to find out a solution for a problem and when they want to draw an answer for a question, they use their thinking tools and that thinking tools are nothing but science process skills. Even we use the process skills while reading, writing and learning or thinking. The next is reading to learn. Scientists read to learn. They read the vocabulary in the science, they look up at the vocabulary, they look up the words in the glossary and they define the word, they use the word in a sentence to show its meaning. The next is writing to communicate. Scientists write the data and interpret the data to the uh, other people. So they write in order to communicate with the other people. They write their uh, information or the collection by using four different types of writing, which we have discussed already, that narrative writing, persuasive writing, informative writing, and expressive writing. 
using numbers. They also use numbers in their work to interpret the data. They might use uh, tables, charts, uh, graphs and even pie charts to interpret the data and to show the results of their investigation. Last topic of our lesson is safety in science. While doing an experiment, we should follow all the safety rules and we should know about all the safety symbols uh, while doing an experiment in a scientific lab. With this, we have completed our lesson, what is science? To evaluate the understanding levels of the students, here I have given some of the core questions from the lesson, what is science? So, the first question is define the following terms, science, scientific method and science process skills. The next question is list out the different process skills, write the five steps of planning and investigation, observe the information which is given on page number 10 and 11 and try to write the answers for the given questions. Write some safety measures to be followed while doing an experiment in the laboratory. So these are the core questions from your lesson. Try to find an answer or try to write an answer in your own words based on the explanation.